Hello, I'm Mark. Hi, I'm James. And today we're going to be looking at speed paints again for the second video. Yes. Which, which means if you've not yet seen the first speed painting video, go give that a watch. Yeah, there's tons of basic advice in there, lots of us looking at the, the general properties of these paints and yeah. how they work. But this one's a bit different. It is a bit different. So what we're going to do is we're going to build on what we discussed in the first uh, video. We're going to be looking at how to take your speed painting approach to the next step, to the next level. Speed painting with finesse. Finesse. I'm not sure finesse is what I would describe mine as, but yours definitely. Mine's more speed painting with some blundering happy accidents, you know? It's been very unkind. So what we're going to do is, we've got this array of miniatures here, we'll show a few spins, and me and James are going to talk about what our approaches were, and throw out some really, uh, well, what we hope are useful tips, which hopefully you'll be able to take away from it. Yep, for sure. Let's go see those spins. So in the previous video, you painted quite a lot of figures in about 10 minutes a figure. This time, however, you've painted a single miniature in a lot longer than that. You've taken about two hours on this uh, Oathmark Revenant figure. Yep. It looks like it too. You've done some really cool techniques. So tell us a bit about it. First of all, you're very kind to say it looks like I've taken uh, time on this one. Um, so essentially, this one was about using multiple uh, tones on the same areas to create more interesting kind of patterns. So you've got like a pattern on the on the copper. And so essentially, started off by in the same process as I did with the other miniatures um, that you've seen in the previous video. Um, so with Zenithal, then I painted the metallic areas using uh, thrush metal from scale color, which is a nice kind of dark silver color. And, uh, and then I kind of transformed the silver into a bronze using uh, sand golem, an interesting uh, paint name to use for making copper, but it, it works really well. And then, as I mentioned, I made a pattern using um, plasmatic bolt. Yeah, that one seems like that's the kind of paint that I think I'm going to use a lot going ahead because it has other uses as well. Mm -hmm. You've kind of you've brought it into other elements of the paint scheme there as well. Mm. Yeah, so on the skin, obviously, to make these kind of decrepit, decaying, and, uh, and, and nicely uh, beaten by, uh, by you know, just kind of decaying uh, components. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I went for it on there as well. And it, it kind of has an almost ethereal, moonlight kind of glow look to it as well mm. because of that. Um, and I noticed you've also added a bit more depth to the metals just to finish them off with kind of fine pin line washes on areas. Yeah, so in the deepest recesses, I used uh, a bit of grim black. And uh, to be honest, this paint, uh, the grim black, is an excellent uh, pin wash, recess wash, whatever you, whatever project you're on, whether it's a speed paint project or whether it's something that, you know, whether it's something that you spend a bit more time on, it, it works really well for that one. As does um, Grave Lord Grey. Equally so, that one works pretty fantastically. For yeah, that. and I think the dark wood as well is one that I'll use a bit if I'm doing slightly more weathered metals. You yeah. could use that just to give a slightly darker tone. Yeah, and again, going with that paint actually, because it's quite warm, it's got that warmth, which if you create a uh, kind of recess shot on a warmer material, it, it will do the same. Yeah, for sure. And I guess the final thing is like most of this is with speed paints, mm. uh, and then you've just added some final touches on the back, like. Uh, edge highlights and things, not using speed paints. Yeah, I just went in there with a final edge highlight using a traditional acrylic paint. And it just has that quite, uh, the required opacity for, for and, and control that you get with a traditional acrylic paint, which you really would struggle to do with uh, with a speed paint, given that they're quite transparent and very fluid. Yes, and I mean, but that doesn't take a lot of time, does it? You've done that pretty quick. Yeah, so yeah. just that final touch to give a bit of extra pop. Yeah, another minute or two, final, final step. Yeah, and it looks really good. Not lots of atmosphere, which is always great. Thank you. So now, here we have a really interesting project, which uh, James has been, uh, was busily working on and his hectic period of working with speed paints. It is an Oxford die-cast um, Hawker Tempest Mark V. That's one hell of a title yeah, for, for a miniature. It's a, yeah, it's a cool little plane that we, we get some of these kits sometimes. and Well, I say kits, but they're actually full finished models mm. that are painted. Mm. Um, my version, though, looks really ruined. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, That's because we dropped it accidentally and uh, knocked off some of the propellers and actually shattered the cockpit. So I was like, well, that's not good, is so it? So this was like this. You, I, I presumed that you destroyed this for the project. It was destroyed by accident and thus became the project. Um, so what I wanted to do with this was make it look like it's crashed and it's wrecked mm -hmm. and has seen a few years maybe, had or a few months, um, <laughs> yes. And it's it's got some rust effects and I've added some extra depth. 
You mentioned the grim black being yeah. really good for pin lining. Yeah. I did that on this figure, but I did it really rough and ready. Mm -hmm. I splodged it onto the wings, roughly following all the lines, mm -hmm. and then just once it once it was on, wiped it off with my finger. So just, just your finger, not not a cotton bud. You could use not, that as well. But okay. I, was, I was being my usual messy <laughs> self. It's the and best way to be. Yep. So I did that first, and that added a bit of extra depth into mm -hmm. the recesses. Then I was like, all right, well, let's see what, see what else we can do. So I used, I used the same paint and applied it on the other wing, mm -hmm. let it start to go tacky, and then I got a dry brush and started to whip it down the wing, okay. which creates very fine little lines. And I did mm. the same effect with different, different browns as well. Mm. And it just makes these streaks on there. Uh, and then I've applied different tones. There's some brown and there's some slight yellow brown coming on just to differentiate the tones through the wings. Mm -hmm. And I even put a little bit of the, uh, oh, what's it called, Prisma plasmatic bolt. Is okay. that what it's called? Yep. Yeah, uh, that's, that's what we're going for. That's on the underside of the canopy, just, okay. to, just to tint it. So it looks like there's some uh, reflection of the sky. It was honestly, I, I think it would have been more realistic if I hadn't done it. And okay. I kind of knew that before I did it. But I wanted to test how it mm -hmm. worked through a clear thing. And it actually okay. it does tone it really well. So those are some extra techniques you can do for that. And obviously, I've stuck clump foliage on just to finish things Which off. Which is always fun to do anyway. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Oh, and there's a, a final kind of very rough stipple of metallics back mm. over the top just to break up the effects that I've done. Very cool. OK, so next up, we have an elephant which was painted as part of a, a whole range of elephants, which the entire team, it felt like, uh, for, from here worked on um, for the Beast of War themed issue, uh, which is issue 411, which is available end of February. Yes, I mean, Mark did some beautiful versions of elephants, including your own version of this Victrix elephant. I did. It's a wonderful elephant to work Yeah, you did yours Roman, but I wanted to change it up a bit. We'd got some cool half-orc miniatures from Crusader Miniatures. I converted them to become the crew of a bit of a fantasy elephant. And this guy's wielding one hell of a spear. Yeah, he's ready to yeah. uh, rain destruction from above. So. The real thing here, there's nothing that different to what I've done on other figures with the speed paints, but it's, I think it illustrates that as long as you keep color theory in mind, you mm. can paint something really quick and it can still look really effective. I've, I've done quite a contrasting combination of yellow and purple on the howder, the shield, and the little areas around there. I've worked that into the, the fur around the necks mm. of the half forks. And just because you're using fast painting doesn't mean you should abandon those. Of course. And you've, even, and you've even got your small bit of red in there, which every miniature needs. Does it really? Is it that, does. Is that a rule? It's a rule. It is a rule. Every <laughs> miniature needs a little bit of red. Well, there's actually, there's little, to tie that together, there's also a little bit of red around the eyes. Ah, just just so subtly applied. So you're going for your red triangle, your colour triangle. Yeah, a little bit. And some more colour theory there for you. <laughs> so, yeah, just zealot yellow down to fire uh, giant orange in some of the areas of here. And it's just a very deep hive dweller purple, mm. almost to the black of... Of, yeah. at the base just so it doesn't really pop too much and it makes that yellow stand out and then just lightening it up and putting some scratches and things on there as well scratches are always good texture yeah is always always a big bonus on a miniature makes yeah. it look real yeah and i followed what you did on your elephant to make it a darker not just pure pure gray yeah um you you spent ages on yours doing it with more traditional paints mm. and far more finesse I've just splodged in a bit of the brown tones into the ears mm. and around around some of the recesses there on the elephant to make it look a bit more realistic. You wouldn't know you just splodged it on there. Well done there, James. Thank you. <laughs> the king of splodge. <laughs> king of splodge. That should be on your title. <laughs> so these ones, uh, some mighty lions, very big lions. Again, from our Beast of War themed issue, mm -hmm. we were just painting lots of animals. And these are from Cerberus Studios. Really nice resin kits. The bases on these are sculpted about as well as some full models that we've seen. These miniatures are very, very detailed. If you do pick these up, be mindful that there's a lot of um, the residue left on them from the mold. Um, so you need to give them a really good bath. Uh, so that, that's the one thing that you need to be mindful of when working on these. Um, but project-wise, when, when it comes to uh, using speed paints in these, I effectively use the speed paints in combination with traditional acrylics. And it was a combination of layering, glazing, layering, glazing, um, to create what is quite a high contrast um, finish. And uh, it was it's great fun to do. It's almost animated in style. And sometimes it's good to try different things. I all, all too often I paint projects to try and make them look very natural. So painting these lines with, in a very unnatural uh, animated style was something which I uh, really enjoyed doing. Yeah, they, the, the approach you took, I mean, can you mm. talk a bit more about that, how you kind of, you utilize speed paints and a particular paint to 
bring the accents of highlights into that? Yeah, so um, I used, it's like a really pale vanilla yellow tone, which is the uh, finish tone you can see on their shoulders and, and on their back. And so the basic way I would do it is you apply, you basically establish where your highlights are using, using the yellows. And then you glaze it down using a um, combination of, it was pallid bone, dark woods, um, hardened leather, any of the kind of yellow tones from the speed painting kit. And then you reestablish your highlights again by stippling it on and then using a slightly lighter of the uh, speed paints to then glaze it again to keep tying it in. And then again, you come back in with more of the, uh, the, uh, the, the high tone for acrylic paint and you keep repeating that process until you've got this really effective, high contrast appearance. The final step was actually to go in and, and boost the appearance of the shadows, again by using grim black and um, the dark wood color. Yep. It's kind of akin to what competition painters would do on their figures, you know, mm. glazing up and down, up and down. Mm. But just because of the speed paints, the form formulation of those, mm. they go over quite well as glazes straight out of the bottle, whereas normally you'd yeah. maybe have to mix your own, right? Yeah, so speed paints make amazing glazes. You know, that, that's effectively what they are, is a really good glaze, which have certain properties which enable them to kind of collect in recesses. Whereas if you're making your own glaze, if you're using a medium and inks or a medium and paints or even just paint and water, you may not quite know what the consistency is going to be. There's a bit of playing around with it. Whereas these paints, they work as a glaze almost pretty much out of the bottle. And you can actually see that really well on the bases, which you didn't go up and down, up and down as much mm. with. That's much more of just a splodge it on. And it was splodged on, together. Yeah, highlight and then throw some greens on there. Yeah. And uh, I went for the greens again, thinking of color, th color theory to contrast with the yellows. And you got some red on. And I got some red on. As always, you make sure you get some red on there. Following swiftly on from the lions, we have this enormous miniature. Uh, we thought the lions were big. This one dwarfs the lions. Um, from uh, Dungeons and Lasers, Draculus the Cunning. So yeah. James, this looks really impressive and it photos really well. As yeah, well. it's nice, isn't it? it? It's a very cool kit. Uh, the whole range of dragons that they do, they're all they're all funky and they actually all are going to paint really well with speed paints if you use a similar approach to what I have because mm. there's a lot of texture to them. There's a lot of sharp detail. Yeah. yeah, so so what I've done with this is it's largely done with an airbrush, but the beginning is a zenithal highlight. So that's over black, you spray a grey, and then using a big dry brush, you pick out all those final raised details mm -hmm. with a white. And that acts as your underpainting, that's your base. Mm -hmm. And then on the wings, for example, on the wing membranes, I started off with Hive Dweller Purple through the airbrush mm -hmm. at about 20 PSI mm. and just sprayed in between all these bits, not being too careful, and left that to dry. Mm -hmm. Once that was done, I uh, used a blue, a slightly lighter tone of blue in between, which just accentuates the middle. But then, similar to what you did on your lions with going up and down, I came back in with my dry brush mm -hmm. Dry brush more white on, right okay. over the top, so it looked very yeah. stark. But then I could go back in with the same High Lord blue, mm -hmm. and it, it gave it that extra pop in some of the areas. Oh, okay. And I just kept doing that, going back and forth, back and forth mm -hmm. between the dry brushing and the new tones, and it gives you more depth. Same on some of these areas, you can see on the top of the head. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a lot paler, that's because I went back in with the dry brush. And it's a really simple technique to get these things done really quick. This, mm. including drying time, took two hours. That's not bad, is it? Especially no. for a miniature this size in general. I yeah. couldn't do that yeah. with a brush, obviously. It would take <laughs> a lot longer to apply the speed paint. But you can use these speed paints so easily through the airbrush, and they're quite accurate. Mm. Like, as long as you've got good airbrush control, you can mm. get them roughly in the right places, mm. too. So that's something to consider. And then like you on the, the rock promontory that mm. he's, he's kind of wrapped around, very Did basic. Did you dismount him from the rock before yes. you painted that? Yeah. built him in sub-assemblies, yeah. knowing that I was then going to uh, fix him onto the rock. Yeah. So that's something to consider before painting. But yeah, it's very basic that. It's just lots of colors blended together. It's just lots of colors splodged on with a brush. Perfect, looks great. So hopefully you got some good advice from those little bits. Um, we're gonna keep using these paints going ahead, I suspect. I'm using them on a project which I'm currently working on. There you go. Which I can't say what it is yet. It's a secret. Keep it secret. Keep it secret. If you wanna see more stuff from us, make sure you uh, subscribe to our channel because we're gonna have a lot more ahead. Maybe give the video a like, put a comment if you want to see any more of anything in particular. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and we'll be back with more speed painting stuff in the future, I'm sure. Yeah, most certainly. Cool. So that's it for now. Bye, everybody. This video has been brought to you by WI Prime, Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club.
view more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.